Well, how's it going? I'm Mark Duffy. Welcome to my channel. On today's episode, I'm going to be talking to you everything you need to know about having your photos ready for print. This is talking directly to the print source with the guys who know better than me how you get your photos ready for print. This is a follow on video to my previous tutorial showing how I prepare my files for print. If you haven't seen that, you can check it out right here. Today I'm in with Glen Art to see how they actually go about printing files and their opinions and how you should really start a conversation with your printing companies. It's so important. So with that being said, let's get into this. Alan, really appreciate you having me come in here because it's one of the biggest questions comes on YouTube since the last video. Mm -hmm. um, well, what I want to kind of delve into this is your side of things when it comes to receiving prints, how prints should be sent to you, how you like them, the kind of communication that you normally do yeah. between clients yeah. and like the what the expectations are for photographers. What I find at the minute is that the onus is on the is on the printers. Yes. Would you're, you, you? You're absolutely right. Yeah. Where it shouldn't be, it should actually be on the. You're getting so many people sending you in stuff. You've got my stuff coming in. I like my stuff a particular way. You've no way of knowing that. So the really and truly, what I want to just kind of just dispel is that the photographers really need to open a conversation up. You can see it with a lot of the pictures that come in here um, that are sent here and they say, you know, I, I want this photograph printed and they're thinking dramatic. So they want they want a large frame and they sent it at say 72 DPI or, you know what I mean? <laughs> yes. or, or, or very small, maybe 300, but it's photographed at this size, it's sized at this size and they're looking for it at this size. It's not on us to start expanding and, you know, trying to, to, to enhance the photo or change anything about the photo because then it goes back and forth and back and forth, uh, especially if there's color involved. Yeah. Uh, the, more you, the more we change the photo, the, the, the less it's going to be like the original. So we like to get the picture finished, done, sized, exactly as the photographer wants it sent to us so that we can just go, I got your picture, I'm printing it now. And that includes whether it's RPG or what format it's at, what size it's at, particularly dots per square inch. The DPI is the most important yes. because we can't size anything. We work in 300 DPI and up and our printer works from 600 and up. So we get something in at 72. There's nothing we can do. Even if people send me a photo and say, look, I have it squared at four foot by three foot. You know, or I have it sized it's at four no foot good. by three foot. It's no good. It's no good because it's 72 DPI. So when I put it into a uh, 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 300, it comes out this size. Yeah. And yeah. I can't do anything with it. So the most important thing for a photographer to do is to have all that, to learn it, to learn what you're doing, to learn the craft of not just taking the photo, but how you digitally release your photo and present your photo. Exactly. Because the problem with printing, with the scale that we're printing at is... It's the view and distance is yeah. the problem. Yeah. When you look at billboards and we always hear that you can you can scale an iPhone photo up to six and seven meters, but the people viewing those are intended to be 50 foot, 60 feet. Exactly. Where you, when you have you know the prints on the wall that we see here, people will they will pixel people, they'll walk to an inch of that, they'll be average, what would you say, three, four foot away from Yeah, and up, I mean if it's in a, if it's sitting in a sitting room, you're never you're never gonna be seven or eight foot away from a from a picture in a sitting room, exactly. in an average sitting room, if it's above the fireplace or whatever else. So you'll know yourself, if you, yeah. if you enlarge a photo, you'll start to see the blues and the reds will begin to separate a little. You'll get blotches of color, you'll get blocks of color, as opposed to a smooth, you know, change, transition from one color to another. If it's at a small DPI, there's nothing I can do with it. Okay, Alan, so I've actually given you a print of my Malinhead Sunset. Mm -hmm. On these examples, I've given you one with my signature on it, and that is ready for print. And then on another file, I've actually given you, this is how it was edited for web. But this is just to show the difference between seeing your photos backlit perfectly on a computer to then being printed where you forget that it's, not, it's no longer backlit. And this is where we have to brighten up the images. From you looking at it, what would be your thoughts? Well, the first thing I always do when you open up a photo on Adobe Photoshop, and the first thing I do is I go to image, image size to make sure that what is sent to me is the size that they're asking for. So you sent me a 12 by 8, so that's at 12 by 8, and the resolution, which is the most important, the resolution is at 300. That's perfect for me. Uh, that means I know that I don't have to do anything with this picture. And would you recommend, like, I have a habit of sending on, if I'm printing 12 by 8, 
I will send you a 12 by 8 file and also name it in the name so you know so there's no confusion. Absolutely, stuff. yeah, because if you're sending an email and you can write it wrong in the email, but if the picture, if you send the wrong picture, so if you're sending me an email and you say, I want it 24 by 16, and then you sent me a file that says 12 by 8, then I could, that means I can contact you and say, are you sure you sent me the right file? You should always name your file that you're sending to the printer the size that it is. And not just 40 by 40, it's 40 centimeters by 40 centimeters or 400 millimeters or inches. It doesn't matter, but you should always name the file the size it's to be. Yeah, that's the habit I got into from graphic design. I know some people will say, so what's the harm in sending full res? Uh, is that a common practice you see with customers? Um, what I would see much more is that is, is that something is sent at very low resolution or much smaller. I don't really get, I sometimes get enormous files that are almost like raw, you know, the raw um, data. But really that's a job that, that the photographer um, has to do themselves. I don't like too much manipulation. You shouldn't have any, you shouldn't really have too much manipulation in terms of the photo, but that you should have it sized right. You should have it the right DPI. You should name it right, send it to us. I mean, you're sending a, a picture to us and it's your one picture that you want printed, but we're getting 20 or 30 pictures all the time. You're just one of 20 or 30. So we don't have time to sit at every single picture and go, is this the right size? Is this look good for them? Should I do this? Should I do that? I love to have a picture that's ready to go print. It's what you always send me. It's like, this is the picture that I want printed. This is the size I want to print it at. No messing. Straight to the printer and done. Really what someone's, what a printer is looking for. You know? Yeah, exactly. Otherwise you're sending it to a graphic designer, which is a completely different a completely different idea, you know? A lot of people think that because you're sending to a printer, you're sending to a graphic designer as well. But that's not always the case. Okay, so like I was saying, I've got two files ready to go. We've got the dark frame and we've got the one that's ready for print. Mm -hmm. And while I'm looking here now at the minute, like the sky is, it's looking better exposed, but I'm, I'm noticing banding in and around here, which wouldn't have been seen on the web. And what I want is the photo to replicate what was put on web. And I'm kind of known for, this is why I use this as an example specifically, is I'm known for the glow. In, in my scenes, I really love that ethereal feel. Just one thing about controlling the exposure, I find that when you do that, you kind of lose that glare, that squint that you feel yeah. when you're there. So I'm trying to get that. And that's one of the things I really want in my prints is I kind of want that feeling, even though you're not going to get it off paper as you would with, a, with a, a backlit screen. But what you're noticing here, okay, the sky is a little bit more controlled, but I've lost so much detail. Yeah, no, this is, this is where I, the first thing I would spot when I look at the two of these now, Again, this is fine, but when you compare it to what you actually want to print, yeah. you're losing the shadows here, shadows here, you're losing all that detail. You're losing detail here. So the details on the rocks. Now, at a print this small, it's not that much of an issue, but if you're printing this two or three times the size, yeah, that would be just jet black. Whereas you've lots of details in here. I'm not even looking at this yet. I can see, I can see subtleties lost here yeah. there's band there's lines here where it's much more subtle and this sun glows and it doesn't here there's, there's the sun there and you can see that it's dark around here whereas this is glaring out it almost looks like it's backlit yeah yeah but i would be much more concerned about how dark these shadows have got and and how much detail is lost particularly here that's the first thing i i would i would spot and this is a, this is a great example where it is you. You are like I'm on. A, I'm on a calibrated screen. This has all been prepared. Yeah. You know, and I know exactly how I want the photo to look. And even on my calibrated screen, it's not the most contrast heavy. Mm. Even when I look on the screen, but that has to account for the fact that it's going to be slightly darker on print. It's going to be extremely contrasted on consumer products like yeah. phones, laptops, etc. So you kind of you're you're kind of balancing in between all of these to try and please everyone all at the one time. Yeah, there's definitely a difference between what you're putting on to, as you say, your phone or your laptop or whatever else to what's been printed. 
um, you can definitely see a difference in it. And, and I would say almost relax when you're coming to stuff that's been printed. Don't hit the contrast heavy. <laughs> yeah. Don't hit the colors heavy. Don't oversaturate. It's fine. So we use an Epson P9500 and it has tw it's 12 cartridge. Every single color that you send us, we can reproduce. Uh, our monitor is set exactly to the printer. So yes. what I see on the monitor is exactly what's printed. Um, I get quite a lot of stuff where people are sending me what they think this is, and then I put it up on a, a really good monitor, which a lot of people don't have, and you can see that it's much darker. Actually, when we were back at the computer, I did notice the monitor that you're using, and mm -hmm. it is one that I've been looking at. I, as far as I know, I'm pretty sure that's the BenQ photography monitor. Yeah, yeah, They have yeah. different ones, the ones that are called for graphic design, and yeah, they come like self-calibrated from the factory. Yeah. And I have a calibrator at home as well, but you know, it's, it's an LG monitor. It's not necessarily designed for the use that I'm putting it through, but yeah. I've been getting, you know, my results are great. I'm so yeah, happy yeah. with the results. It's why I haven't really changed. It was a cheap enough monitor too, but if I was upgrading, that is one I was looking oh, at. Oh, it's, it's amazing. What I see on the monitor is exactly what's printed, exactly. Nice. So uh, it's essential. It's absolutely essential. Yeah, and that's the thing as well. I, I get mails from people as well about asking about ICC profiles, and you have to have the ICC profile for the printer. And yeah, you do. Yeah, you don't really need that. I mean, if you want to really nerd out, you can. But yeah. I, I, I've never been asked really. I've never oh. been asked um, for ICC profiles. We have it set up for our printer and our monitor, our Mac. Um, to take those details from me to set your picture up so that it suits what I'm printing is unnecessary work for yourself. The only time I, even in the years of me graphic designing, the only time we ever used it was when I worked in Buzz Sports. We had problems with consistency and color. Um, and that was down to the branding of the company, but the, the printing quality of tabloid newspapers. And mm. that's the only time I have ever, ever used ICC profiles. Mm. And even at that, it didn't really help our problems. And no. in all the years I've been coming to you, I've never even asked about an ICC printer. I mean, there's no, there's no real need. I mean, you, here we have one printer that we use, so we yeah. don't change our ICC at all. Um, so, I mean, if you want to go looking for it, it you can, but it, I would say it's very unnecessary. It's yeah. very unnecessary. It's, it's adding extra work for yourself to set it up to just use our printer. Whereas you could go to another printer another time or send it on to somebody else uh, to get printed there, then they have to change all that again. It's it, it's unnecessary work. I I would very rarely be asked for it. Well, here, Alan, thanks for the thanks for the insight yeah, on that. No there, I'm going to go into the garage now and round the back. Yeah, I'm done see. here. I'm <laughs> You're done. You, you, <laughs> we go on home. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm going to get the uh, see how you just go about framing these and the mounts and, and what the process is for that. Yeah, as well. so yeah. Cool. Really appreciate it, dude.
I hope you enjoyed this video, you got something from it. If you did, give it a like, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell to get notified every time I post up a new video. You can find me on all social medias under Mark Duffy Photography. And until the next time, later Gators.